Hey everybody, welcome back to Newegg TV. I'm Seth Rodkin and today we're checking out three of Gigabyte's 100 series motherboards. Joining me today is Gigabyte's motherboard guru himself, Leon. Thanks so much for stopping by. Thanks for having me. Today we're checking out three of the Z170X motherboards. We got the Gaming G1, the Gaming 7, and the UD5. So we're going to take a closer look at these boards in just a second, but start us off by telling us what are the major improvements for the 100 series? What were the major areas of focus? So definitely for the 100 series, uh, you guys want to be looking at USB 3.1, uh, next generation connectivity, uh, support for NVMEs, uh, as well as future proofing. So like I said, USB 3.1, you want to have uh, both your Type-C as well as the standard A, so you have backwards functionality as well. And then on our gaming boards, you want networking and audio. So let's start off with the heatsink. Uh, especially for people that are looking for liquid cooling, what does this offer? So on our gaming G1 board, as you can see here, we actually have a special heat sink uh, that supports both active and passive cooling. So if you guys are good at customizing, you guys want to do your own liquid cooling, you can actually insert uh, your own fittings into here. We have threaded fittings for any type of water cooling barbs for the kits that you guys get. So these are G1 fourth fittings, and you're able to do different types of tubes, thick or thin, depending on your choice. And what about the RAM? So with the RAM, uh, this is the first time that you guys will probably be seeing DDR4 on a mainstream consumer level. It was introduced uh, during the X99 era, but now it's on the 100 series, and these do support DDR4. Now tell us about the overclocking features for people that really want to push things to the limit. Okay, so definitely with overclocking, Gigabyte has always been a big part of that overclocking world. We have a lot of overclocking buttons, quick buttons for power, reset, clear CMOS, and we also have eco and overclocking buttons here too. But one of the other overclocking features that I like to point out would be our Turbo B clock. Now this is actually a chip that allows us to actually manipulate our base clock to whatever frequency that you want, rather than before where you were actually restricted to 5% uh, areas between the traditional straps of 100, 125, or 167. So if you're just overclocking your CPU, this is a whole nother level on top of that. This is just uh, a, a level deeper, mm -hmm. and it gives you more flexibility and functionality and control of your component. So that's definitely something uh, new overclockers would like and even more experienced overclockers would like as well. Now talk to us next about the SATA Express ports. So SATA Express uh, with 100 series, now that there's been an update on the PCH, we actually have a faster bandwidth. So with SATA Express, we're actually looking at 16 gigabits per second versus traditionally only having 10. Mm -hmm. So that's six more, uh, but compared to your traditional SATA, it's 10 more. So you're getting a lot more speed from that. And with SATA Express, we haven't been seeing a lot of drives out there in the market. So one of the things that we've done is we've actually incorporated with our gaming G1 a USB 3.1 bay. Now this bay actually connects through the SATA Express and because uh, USB 3.1 only uses a 10 gigabit bandwidth, the SATA Express port is more than enough to fulfill that need. Now let's talk about the PCIe slot. So it looks like there's metal that's running around. Yeah, so definitely with our PCIe slot, this time around you guys might see something different. There's actually a one piece stainless steel metal shielding on it. And what it does, it actually helps your board in two ways. First of all, it helps prevent uh, the graphics card from putting too much loading on that slot and either bending it or ripping it out during shipment. The second thing that it's useful for is it prevents any possible ESD or interference between the board and the card itself. Now, tell us about the M.2 slots and some of the uses for that. So the M.2 slots is actually a good form for your next generation uh, form factors for storage. NVMEs is one of those. And with our Gaming G1, we actually include a little adapter that actually converts M.2 to U.2. So if you guys are using an uh, Intel NVMe 750 drive that is a 2.5 inch drive, you can actually use that adapter and create a U.2 connector for your drive. And now let's move over to the corner of the board and talk about the audio section. Okay. So for this board, Gigabyte actually is using Creative Soundcore 3D. We're actually using a quad-core audio chip and we're one of the only manufacturers to do so. Now, this chip has a lot of functionalities where it actually provides 127 decibels out to the jack itself. So you're getting high-end quality sound. We have uh, gain switches that allow you to switch from 2.5x to 6x. Mm -hmm. So if you're using headphones with 600 ohms, it's something that's possible. And even with this board, we focus so much on audio that we've added op amps, uh, operational amplifiers that allow you to actually change the sound char characteristics. We have two in the rear. 
uh, one for the left and right channel, and then one for the front audio channel as well. Uh, now let's take a look at the rear I.O., uh, specifically on the Z170X Gaming G1. Mm -hmm. uh, so start us right here with the uh, DAC USBs. So we have USB DACs on this board, and what a DAC is is actually a digital to analog converter. And if you guys have, if you guys are audiophiles, you guys are into that DJ scene, the DACs will be useful for people who have external DACs. If they have a self-powered DAC, you can actually shut off the USB power going through those two ports. And even for gamers, it's useful because if you're using a wireless keyboard or mouse, you want to have less interference. I would recommend you guys to use those ports because they have less, less power fluctuation overall. Sure. And then right next to it, looks like we have some wireless support. Yes. So we do have wireless and Bluetooth. The Bluetooth is 4.1. Wireless is wireless AC. And this goes along with our Killer Double Shot Pro X3. Now, this is the use of multiple wireless inter uh, network interfaces, one being the wireless card. All right, next we've got HDMI ports. All right, this HDMI port we have on the board is actually an HDMI 2.0. So it's actually able to power up to 60 frames per second. So for those of you guys that are searching for 4K content who want that ultra high definition, you can do playback directly from the board. And what about these USB ports? All right, so we have two sets of USB ports there, one in white and one in red, uh, and as well as the Type-C that you guys might see. So the Type-C and the red port is actually all USB 3.1. Uh, the red one actually shows that it's a 3.1, but it gives you that backwards compatibility with your standard A connector. Uh, the white port that you guys see is actually our Q-Flash Plus. Now, what the Q-Flash Plus does is it allows us to actually flash the BIOS without having CPU or memory installed. So if you're ever in a jam and you don't want to use that dual BIOS function because you're not familiar with it, you can always use our Q-Flash Plus. Uh, and finally, let's talk about, it looks like there are two Ethernet ports here on the back. Yes. So the two Ethernet, just like I mentioned earlier with our Double Shot Pro X3, it's actually the use of three different network connections. Two being wired killer NICs, and then the third being our wireless AC. It allows you to utilize your network connection to how you see fit. So we have software that comes with the driver disk that allows you to actually do packet prioritization and choose which port that you want to have your real-time game, your video streaming to go through, and which one can go first. Awesome. So that basically covers this Gaming G1. Give me the, the quick differences between this, the Gaming 7, and the UD5. So definitely all of these boards are great computer motherboards. Uh, the gaming series are focused on gaming. The UD series is focused on ultra durability mm -hmm. and you know long performance. And then we also have an overclock seri overclocking series that we didn't bring here today. But overall, like we mentioned, there's overclocking functionality on the gaming boards that you see. So this might be a great board for gamers, but it might also be a good board for people who want to build a workstation, who want to push the limits of their system, and want to do some overclocking at the same time. And that goes the same for the Gaming 7. And for the ultra durable, the UD5, people might want to use it just as an at-home PC, but at the same time, they might want to game on their downtime. So all of these boards will have different segments that will overlap. And it definitely depends on the users, how you guys want to use a board. If you guys want something that has different colors on the LEDs, who can do backlighting, or if you want something that is focused purely on overclocking. Well, Leon, thank you so much for breaking it down for us. No problem, anytime. Yeah, I can't wait to actually build a PC around one of these. And, we should know. go do one right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Oh, finally, uh, before we stop talking about it, let's, let's talk about how these things look. Uh, tell me about the, the white and red styling on the front. That looks new. Yeah, so that's definitely something we got a lot of feedback from you guys. Uh, if you guys do have any feedback from us, definitely check out our Facebook page, Gigabyte, uh, Gigabyte USA. And if you guys want to find out more information about the boards, go to our website, Gigabyte.us, and you can find a lot more information on all of the boards that you see here today. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Be sure to leave any comments you have about these motherboards below. Like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. For New Egg TV, I'm Seth Rotkin. See you guys next time.